Let us pray. Father, we thank you again for this moment. Lord, as you unveil unto us your word, we pray that indeed we will not just be hearers of your words alone, but we do us of these same words. Lord, grant us a listening ear and a receptive heart to listen and to receive your word and to put into practice your words. Heavenly Father, have your way. Let your name be praised and be glorified. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 All right. Today, the Lord wants to remind us of a popular scripture in the Bible, Psalm 23. Psalm 23. We should be able to recite that psalm. And I want us to recite it without looking at our, uh, at our Bible. Psalm 23. Are we ready? Yes. We are going to recite it. I don't want to look at your Bible. I want us to take it from verse 1 to 6. Psalm 23. Want to go. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepareth a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Alright. The way we said it, we have missed various versions of scriptures. Both King James, both NIV, everything. We mixed them together and get, came to the conclusion. But that is a very interesting psalm in the scripture. Written by David. Now we'll be doing some character studies uh, next year. Though we did one this year, the life of Joseph. And um, if love permits us, we'll be discussing some of other ones like David and some other ones. So we we'll, we'll just taking this one in brief. David, the writer of this psalm. If you know the story of David, I mean it was the story of David the children learned. David that fought Goliath, the parents asked him to go and see the brethren in the war front and then give them food to eat. And he got there and because the Lord has designed it that he is the one, is the chosen one to pull down the enemy, the Lord God Almighty, David that went for an errand, went there, presented the food to his brothers, saw the giant called Goliath challenging, challenging his uh, people and then he asked the king, he said, I'm going to do what? I'm going to face this man. And he actually faced the man. And uh, the Lord granted him victory. The Lord granted him victory. And this was David that the Lord used to defeat the enemy. And this David again, we saw that even though God anointed him to be king, the Lord anointed him to be king when there was a king existing. When there was a king on the throne, that's when God anointed him to be king. I'm going to give you a brief story. We can't finish the story of David. It's a, it's a series. I have about 10 series on David. But, where I'm going is this. Even though God has anointed him a king, because the appointed time for, for the, the purpose God has proposed for him has not reached, he passed through many battles in life. 
He passed through many challenges in life. Even after he became king, his children, one of his sons, revolted against him. He ran away. David passed through many dangers. David has seen he was living in the cave. David knew what hardship was. David knew what it means to be hungry. David knew what it, what it means to be, to be in want. David knew what, is, what it means to be in plenty. As at this time he wrote the psalm, because of his experience, he came to a conclusion and said, All the journeys of my life to this moment, the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord has been my shepherd. In other words, the Lord has been the one guiding me, leading me. So, all the challenges he passed through in life, the hardship he passed through in life, he came to the conclusion, when he became a king, when things were so, I mean, when God gave him peace, when God gave him plenty, he was blessed. The Lord blessed him so much. Even though we know the son after him called Solomon was extremely, was the richest so far. But one thing is there. The understanding of this man, somebody who has passed through tough times, somebody who has passed through hardship, he came to the conclusion and said, in all this, the Lord has been my shepherd. So today you are going to say like David, the Lord is my shepherd. Say that to yourself. The Lord is my shepherd. Say it again. The Lord is my shepherd. Say it again. The Lord is my shepherd. You need to understand that. And I say it's a popular sound. We know it. We recite it. We memorize it. But unfortunately, we don't keep the understanding. We don't keep the message that is contained in every line in this psalm. And that's what the Lord is trying to analyze unto us today. The Lord is my shepherd. David looked at the psalm. And if you look at Psalm 23 verses 1 to 3, you will see that David is saying, Because the Lord is my shepherd, all my physical and spiritual lack is over. All my physical and spiritual lack is over. It's over. That is why he says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In other words, lack is over. Lack with what is over. I will not lack any good thing, both in the physical and what in the spiritual. I will not want, you know, we try to differentiate between want and need. Want is, for example, everybody wants a good house, a good car, good children, good job. You understand what I'm trying to say? Uh, good dresses, good shoes, and so on and so forth. Good radio, good television, good this, good that, good that. Those are words. But not all your wants can be met at the same time. It is only your need that can be met. But David was a man who had experienced want. He has wanted, he wanted many things. But he made, he, he came to the conclusion. Now listen to me. He said, I mean, what David wanted to do was that I am going to build a house for the Lord. You understand? That is going to build a house for the Lord. Where the ark of God will be what? Will be placed. I'm going to build the ark for the Lord. How can I be living in a, such a beautiful house? And the ark of God is living in a tent, David said. I am going to build a house for the Lord. He had that desire. He wanted to do it because he was not satisfied with what he had already. Or what concerned the things of God. But unfortunately for him, you may want, and for us also, we want so many things. But it's not everything that the Lord will give to you. The Lord only gives you what is necessary, what is needful, what is good for what? For the moment. 